Okay, everyone, welcome to our uh, video tutorial on a little bit of beginning of kinematics. Now, uh, what we're going to start with is uh, motion in a straight line. Um, now, the vector quantities that we're going to be dealing with are uh, velocity and acceleration. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we'll be dealing with constant acceleration. Uh, like falling objects, uh, but later we'll be dealing with varying acceleration in which integration will be will be needed in order to calculate. So let's say uh, we have a car, a very cool uh, Prius, good gas mileage and whatnot. Um, and we want to describe. It's helpful to describe this car's position from a certain point on the car. Okay, so let's say we describe it from uh, the very front of the car. Uh, we do this so we can represent this car as a particle. Now, how we're going to describe this motion is um, by describing the change in position over a certain time interval. So to do that, we need a uh, coordinate system. So as you can see here, here's our the front of our car. And uh, let's say our car moves from uh, this position to the sum position x2. Okay, so our displacement is the vector quantity from x1 to x2. Now, uh, on this coordinate, uh, we've got this is uh, time, or no, this is our x position. So this is position. Okay. So, um, the car goes some short distance over a time interval. So what we're going to do is we're going to define our average velocity. Okay, and how we're going to define that, we're going to call it the average in the x position. And how we're going to find that is delta x. Okay, so say this position right here is x2, and this right here is x1. Well, our average velocity is going to be delta x over delta t, or x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1. So, Average velocity, vector quantity, and its x component is delta x over delta t. Now, say our car uh, started over here at 20 meters from the origin. So x1 equals 20 meters. Meters. And uh, x2, let's say it is um, 40 meters from the origin. And this all happens in uh, two seconds. So our time is two seconds. Well, our average velocity is going to be 40 minus 20, so 20 meters, over two seconds, which would give you uh, an average velocity of 10 meters per second. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now, this is positive because we are moving in the positive x direction. Now, if we'd had a negative velocity, you never think of negative speeds, but negative velocity, all that means is it's moving in the negative x direction. It's not slowing down or anything. The negative tells you which direction you are moving. Um, so, average velocity is not dependent on the path. So, let's say um, we've got our car, and this is going to be a position, position versus time graph. I can get my, there we go, position versus time. So, here we have our starting position and our x2. So here we have x1 and here we have x2. 
and here we have T1, and here we have T2. So our T1 we just made 0, and our T2 was 2 seconds. So as you can see, we've got the horizontal and the horizontal. So our average velocity is the slope between these two points. In other words, our change in y, our x2 minus x1, over our change in x, a rise over run, t2 minus t1. Now, say this is our car, and it's moving along at a nice, you know, nice speed, and say we've got another car, and uh, it starts out going faster than our car, but has engine trouble right around here, and passes through x2 at the exact same time our car does. Well, even though this car started faster, it ended with the same average velocity. In other words, average velocity is not path dependent. So, as uh, Pixar and Lightning McQueen will demonstrate, so Lightning McQueen is killing it in cars. He's a whole lap ahead right now. And everybody's going crazy for him, blah, blah, blah. Uh-oh, engine trouble. So, the other cars are going to catch up to him in a very exciting and dramatic fashion. And here's the finish line. He's hopping along, as cars do sometimes. And so they all started in the same position. And even though they end in the same position, spoiler alert, that's a tie. Now, even though Light and McQueen started much faster than the other cars, they all passed through the same finish line at the same time. In other words, their average velocity was the same. So average velocity is not path dependent. Now, average velocity can't tell us very much. In other words, it can't tell us the magnitude and direction of the velocity, say, right here, or right here, or anywhere in between this line. It can only tell you the distance over this time interval. So to do that, we are going to be using instantaneous velocity. Now, instantaneous velocity is a little different because when we think of an instant, we think of a very brief moment. Oh, that happened just an instant ago. Well, in physics, it's different. In physics, an instant has no time duration. It's not just a brief moment. It's an instant. In other words, it refers to a single value of time. Now, it's not practical to try and measure instantaneous velocity because all of the velocities that we measure are an average. Um, now, we can, make, we can make the time interval very small. For instance, a radar gun. How a radar gun works, it sends out radio waves to the car and it receives them back and it measures the Doppler effect. Still, an interval of time is involved. Instantaneous velocity, there is no time interval. It's only an instantaneous t. So our instantaneous velocity, we're going to call it uh, vx, is the limit as t delta t approaches zero okay, of delta x over delta t. So the shorter the time interval, the closer we will get to the actual instantaneous velocity. Okay? Now, in calculus lingo, this is known as a derivative, or dx, it's written as dx over dt. Uh, and, and most often when we are talking velocity in physics, we were referring to an instantaneous velocity. Only when we state an average velocity are we talking about average velocity. 
Now, uh, derivatives are slopes of the tangent lines. So we had our uh, distance versus time graph, and we had something that looked kind of like this. And this is distance, and this is time. So we had our average velocity as from here to here. Well, our instantaneous velocity will be the slope of the tangent line at a certain point. Okay? Now, we're going to talk more about derivatives uh, in class, but this will get you started on uh, instantaneous velocity. Main point is you want shorter time intervals to get closer to the actual uh, instantaneous velocity value. The shorter your time intervals, the more accurate your instantaneous velocity will be.